Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today this is a tutorial for this flowery tracer animation, which is essentially inspired by Cinema 4D X particle. I just want to get a try about the curves avoiding intersections because last time we were doing a very compact uh, setup in circuitry boards, but this time I want to do something more scattered. So let's start. So here we in Blender, as always, I'm going to use the presets, which you can download for free from the link in the description. I'm going to set up in a way which is different from what I really did, but it's because there are certain things I did I don't want to explain. So I'm going to simplify the setup so that you can understand. So we start with five points and uh, we need to make that into curve. So let's take a point instance. And this, usually I will start with a curve line or curve linear, but this time, since it does not really matter, we just start with a curve line and extend to one. This is because I do not need actual subdivision amounts if we are extending them out later. So let's take a real life instance because we need to manipulate that. So the first thing I'm going to do is to rotate all these kind of curves. Now we instance five curves, but they are overlapping to each other. I'm going to rotate so that they are facing different direction. Okay. There are many different ways to do that. For example, you can use the index and you can map range that. It's not a procedural, but you can make it a procedural, which I'm not going to really discuss. Here I'm going to talk about a way to use a presets. It's a very special design. So we have float range. And I combine Euler rotation so that I can type 360 degree instead of 2 times pi. Okay. So once I did this, uh, you realize I only have four splines because the last spline, they are actually overlapping to each other. So in order to make this float range not include the last value, uh, I put negative one. So this is a trick of the design because I do not want to add additional socket to make this node too large. So that you know. Next, I'm going to extrude uh, this setup. So I have append points to curve. I explained the last time it's essentially extrusion. Of course, you extrude the mesh, so you have the curve to mesh and the capture so that you have the selection and so on. Okay. But anyway, and then I'm taking a simulation zone. I take the inputs and uh, take the outputs connecting to each other. And I need to define the offset direction. So the offset is the curve tangent, so I capture or store name the attribute. It does not really matter. Let's do a capture. I personally prefer capture over store name the attribute due to many reasons. So let's start with the curve tangent. And I feed that in, not this one, A, and feed that out. And I can put that into the offset. So by playing this animation, you can see they are growing longer and longer. This is what I'm telling. And then we are going to create the branches and rotate that a little bit. So here, what we can do is we can add a noise. So let's add a noise 3D. I want to keep this set up as a 2D so that we can have a kind of effect that they are trying to hit each other, but without an actual intersection. So let's start with the color, but I'm going to multiply 110 to cancel any elevation and so on. So by seeing this, let's try. By playing this animation, we can see there are a little bit of noise. You can increase the scale or you can do whatever you want, increasing the frequency, it's up to you. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is to just decrease the scale of this tangent vector. 
I'm going to decrease outside. So let's take a scale and then replace the linkage. I'm going to take a value position. In this case, it's divided by 10. So that it's a little bit smaller. Let's take uh, maybe 100 less. And then we play this animation. It looks like this. Ah, uh, this is too crazy. I'm going to put that into the noise scale as well. So that they're running very slow. It's a parameter thing, you just can tweak yourself. Okay, something like this, you get a kind of idea. So next we're trying to generate branches. And I've explained in the last tutorial of a circuitry board that to generate a branch, you just join back your initial geometry. So here, let's take a separate geometry because I only want to generate branches at the end points. So maybe this, and after one frame, it extends, generate another. Okay. Another important thing is I only want these five main branches to generate the points. Okay. So I need to determine if all these kind of curves are the initial five branches or not. So here I'm going to take a store named attribute because I want to know the generation. So let's take a G and basically an index. So how do I know the generation for these branches being created? Okay. So last time in circuitry board, I'm using repeated zone in 4.0. So I have this loop index to add values before and after. In simulation inputs, we cannot really do this, but instead we can use a frame number. Uh, not this frame, we, it's actually the same time. So we have frame from the same time and we plug that in. Because as we are playing this animation, the frame number is always different and it's being recorded inside simulation input and output. Okay, and then we join that back. But before I join that back, uh, I need to do the distinguish or discrimination or determination uh, which branches we are working with. Okay, so here, uh, because our animation starts from frame one generally, so this generation will be G equals to one. Which means the initial five branches will not have a G and they will output the G equals to zero. So the answer is very simple. I take a name attribute. I take an integer. I'm asking for G. And if it's equals to zero, then we are making a branch. So basically this is the idea. So now if I plug that in and let's play this animation, you can see there are actually tons of branches being created. It's not very obvious because we haven't really separate all this kind of vector, but you get a kind of idea. Next, I'm going to separate these vectors. I'm going to do a very simple vector rotate. But this is very tricky because obviously I'm not going to rotate the five main branches, but only these new branches. And uh, I'm not uh, rotating for every frame. I just want an initial offset for these branches. So the way to do is very simple. I have this generation number. If these branches are created at this frame, then they should rotate. Otherwise, they stay at their desired direction. So the answer is very simple. If the generation amount or the generation index is equal to frame, 
then I rotate it's a float and the angle is in radians so we do radians so that I can type in 45 degree and then rotate it so now if I play this animation you can see that they rotated the 45 degree, but then they still follow the tangent. This is why we need to redefine the offsets or the direction for these branches to go. So here we only need to feed this vector rotate result to simulation output. So we are replacing the vector and the feedback to the new vector um, we have. And now if you play this animation, you can see this is a very crazy flowery uh, pattern. I think uh, essentially it's a parameter issue. So for example, we are adding noise before vector rotate, which may have influence as well. So we can do the noise after. And another thing is that uh, this noise scale is too large. So we can decrease the scale. You can either use a new multiply to decrease the scale. But uh, essentially this mute multiply is also built in as a fourth. So here I'm just going to maybe decrease it to 0 0.125. So we have a very straight line, but uh, we have also have uh, noise accumulating. Another thing is I can increase the scale maybe to 80 degree. So now we have something like this, uh, a flowery pattern. But uh, we have intersections, so next step is to remove all these kind of intersections. Last time, in circuitry board tutorial, I talked about the principle of this curve intersection detection uh, in which we basically use the recast and in order to have a mesh for recast, we need to curve to mesh and uh, even extrude the mesh and so on and so forth. We also need to do a lot of uh, source position um, operation to avoid uh, premature intersection and so on. But today we're not going to really do that because we're going to use the presets for intersection detection. Okay. So we directly plug these curves and it output the curve points. It's not actually needed for the presets, but I keep that for some reason. So we have to sample index as you see last time. So we take vector. So this vector is the direction vector. We output this direction vector. And we also need an index. And then I plug to replace this append points to curve. Okay. Now if I play this animation, you can see this does not really work. Uh, this is because we're changing the results during this process. So these two linkage are actually having different values. Uh, it, to keep the value consistent, we take a capture attribute in the point domain. I change the code of this append point to curve. So in circuitry board, you should uh, capture at the spline, but here you should capture at point. So this is the difference. So now if we play this animation, you can see uh, it's just a normal without intersection detection because we know uh, we are playing nothing about these settings yet. So we have a forward hit from the recast. We are going to make it as a primary decision. So if it hit, then it should stop move. Otherwise it should move. So we scale this directional vector with this selection and we plug that back. So now if we play this animation, you can see it starts to avoid intersection. But it works too good. It works too well. 
that uh, it uh, will end prematurely. Like uh, there is so much gap, but they stop themselves because they detected uh, this kind of intersection issue. So in order to solve that problem, that's why we have other settings. For example, we have this forward distance. So if this detection has a very long distance from the length of the vector, then it should not really stop because it can take uh, 1,000 years for them to intersect. So for the time being, I do not worry about the intersection. I ask them to move forward. So now if I play this animation, you can see they do not really stop prematurely. They keep moving until they really intersect. But you see, um, there are some issue with this detection method while many other places are working fine. This is simply because when two curves is propagating to the same location, they may potentially cross over. Okay. And uh, I've mentioned last time, I'm not going to fix this issue. It may take extra effort uh, while it does not seem to be important. The easiest method to resolve this issue essentially is actually to manipulate this kind of uh, value of forward vector. So slower it goes, better detection you will have. So that's basically the idea. Of course, if by decreasing the value to propagating your curve, it will take a longer time for them to reach the destination. But this is basically an idea. Uh, we are generating too many points during this process. Because we are running simulation, it's cached every frame, so you may not realize how slow it will be, but it will be recommended if you take a length and into the selection, so that if our vector is not moving due to our collision detection, then it will not really append the points to curve. So we're minimizing the amount of points being generated during this process. So now it looks fine now. So the tutorial is basically finished. The last thing we may need to do is just to give it kind of volume. So we take a set curve radius. And the easiest way to give it a volume or thickness is just a two bevel curve. So we take a bevel curve. The and you can set the length also. And I want it to be thin at the end, so we take a spline parameter into this set curve radius. And we are going to remap 0 to 1 and reverse it. By decreasing the values we have a thin end at the end. So something like this, you can tweak all these other parameters. Sometimes it's a little bit, little crazy, but the rest is, it's really all about it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.